Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Fish. This is the mostly weekly series where I answer your questions on Discord and we talk about the latest guitar gear releases. So don't forget to join if you have a question for a future episode. Link will be in the description. But today, we're going to do things a little bit differently to normal because I've gotten quite a few questions about one brand in particular that's doing some really interesting stuff that's kind of flying under the radar and deserves a full dedicated video. So smack a like down below if you're going to enjoy it. That actually really helps out with the wild and wacky YouTube algorithm. And let's jump into your questions. Retro Noctis asks, Shecht, you're killing it right now. Thoughts? All right, yes, it's time to talk about what our big drywall punching energy friends are up to. They've kind of been on a roll this year with the global introduction of their Made in Japan California Classic series confusing name but we move the outrageously versatile multi-boy 6 series the sleeper super high value sls elite and reaper elite series we've already done a full breakdown on all those i'll leave a link in the description that you can check out after you finish watching this video because they're really cool but like I'd appreciate the watch time on this one too. Anyways, for whatever reason, Schechter doesn't tend to get as much fanfare as like LTD or as Ibanez, even though they are, to quote Retro Noctis, killing it right now. And they've just done a sneaky mid-year drop. The biggest thing that we have to talk about is the new Sunset series. And I should mention real quick that this video is sponsored by Sweetwater, so affiliate links to all the guitars that I'm talking about will be in the description. Of course, if you pick stuff up from there, you get their 55 point inspection, which is like another layer of QC protection as opposed to buying direct. Found that one out the hard way with my first Tom DeLonge strat that I bought directly from Fender.com. And you can get the exact unit you want using the guitar gallery, which is very cool. So they have sponsored the video, but have no input. All opinions are my own to share with you guys. And of course, bookmarking my link if you're picking stuff up in the future really helps out as well. But with that, let's get back into it. So the new Sunset series. Up until now, this has been a USA custom exclusive shape and Schecter have finally brought it into their import lineup with two main variations. The Sunset Triad series is arguably the coolest metal import they or anyone else has dropped this year. They've got Schecter USA pickups, a single angled apocalypse single coil in the neck, and then a tripocalypse triple coil or triple bucker. I don't even know what to call that monstrosity in the bridge. A triple bucker, Try Disaster, that's a reference for you Final Fantasy 13 fans. Neato body, bolts on five piece maple rosewood neck with an ultra thin C shape, ebony fingerboard, 24 stainless steel frets, graph tech nut. I'm a big fan of those offset metal ring inlays. Obviously with the pickup configuration, you've got a pretty cool wiring scheme with the five way. And I can only imagine how thick the chugs are with all three bridge coils engaged. I'm also a big fan of single coil neck cleans and leads. So this looks awesome. Love how the apocalypse pickups have transparent bobbins so you can see the coiled wire as well. Now, I've never tried Apocalypse pickups, but they're powered by a blend of Alnico 5 with ceramic flanker magnets, so you kind of get the warmth of the former and the bite of the latter. And I generally really like that combo. That's what we did for the bridge pickup in my Harley Benton Signature, and it sounds awesome. Plus, Schecter started out as an aftermarket hot rodding company, so they have a strong heritage in quality pickup making. You know, with the recent production challenges and the cost of production increases, most brands have been unwilling to experiment. Most things have been either safe clones or reiterations of timeless designs. And then you've got Schecter just out here snorting monster energy. Like, yeah, dude, here's an idea. Big ass pickup equals big ass chugs. It's just math. And at first I was like, all right, it's cool, but who is this even for? And then I realized it's for me. I really, really want one. Even if it's just to see what the hell a triple coil pickup even sounds like. And I always assume something this experimentally crazy and out there is gonna be super high end. Nope, these wacky tripocalypse equipped beasts are $8.99 for the six string, 949 for the seven string. Also comes in left-handed for both the six and the seven for 50 bucks more. I've said it before, I love that about Schecter. They try and make sure lefties are included in the party right from launch, even for something this outrageously wild. Then they've dropped a related series, the Sunset Extremes, which ironically are less extreme than the Triads. Same shape and general specs, so you've still got the locking tuners, the stainless steel frets, and the spoke wheel truss rod adjustment. The only difference is these come with regular Schecter USA humbuckers, a Sunset Strip in the bridge, 
and a Pasadena in the neck. If I recall correctly, these are quite similar to a Seymour Duncan SH5 Custom and 59 set. Kind of a moderate output overwound ceramic PAF in the bridge and then a more traditional PAF voice pickup in the neck. And of course you got flame maple veneers and matching headstocks. Just like the triads comes in either six or seven string versions, the extremes come in scarlet burst and in gray ghost. And again, lefties are included, but only in scarlet burst. So not nearly as interesting as the triad at first glance, but I was thinking about this. Schechter actually doesn't have too many specifically metal-focused bolt-ons. Outside of these, I can only really think of John Brown's signature Tau series that comes to mind off the top of my head. Schechters are generally set through or neck through, and a lot of modern metal players are turning to bolt-on for the snappiness, so it's cool that Schechter is exploring this niche and in their very own way. Moving on, they've also dropped a new special edition Avenger FRS, and they say the goal of the special editions is super limited runs to fill a niche, no matter how small that niche may be. And you gotta respect them for that fan service attitude from a company as large as Schecter is. So it's a candy apple red satin Avenger set through neck, compound radius ebony fingerboard with stainless steel frets and proper mother of pearl block inlays. All the carbon fiber binding looks kind of awesome, Reminds me of the older Keith Marrow KM2s in the Lamborghini colors. Floyd Rose 1500, so a 1000 with stainless steel moving parts. Schecter USA Apocalypse humbucker in the bridge and a Sustaniac in the neck. And if you've never played a Sustaniac and Floyd Rose combo, you have not lived, my friend. It is so much fun. Comes with a hard case too. What's funny about the Avenger is it looks super metal and they always throw super metal specs into it but with the thick carved top body and C-shaped neck, it actually feels much closer to playing a modern Les Paul with great upper fret access than I was expecting. I was expecting like a super shreddy Ibanez type feel and that's not what the Avenger is about at all. Anyways, this one isn't really my thing, but again, the point of it is to fill a niche no matter how small. Uh, and I mean, this is probably somebody's dream guitar, so I'm super happy for them that this exists wherever they might be. And the last new guitar I want to highlight is the PTEX. Baritone is in right now, and here comes Schecter. Neato body, bolt-on carbon fiber reinforced hard rock maple neck, ebony fingerboard with big block inlays, extra jumbo stainless steel frets. Love how the stainless steel frets are just a thing across so much of Schecter's lineup right now. It's not just limited to the highest end imports. Again, Schecter USA pickups, a Pasadena Plus in the bridge, and a super rock vintage in the neck which seems to be a fairly low output Elnica 5 pickup with no exposed pole pieces. It's a little annoying though how little information Schecter actually gives on its website about how the pickup sounds, like there's no EQ graph or use case suggestions like you get on Seymour Duncan or Bare Knuckles websites. But I'm a huge fan of this trend of baritones on the rise because low notes are super cool. We all know this. But sometimes you want to play those low notes on a guitar that still feels like a guitar. And an 8-string with that massively wide fingerboard feels like a completely different instrument. Personally, I prefer a 28 inch scale length to go even lower, but 27 inches is still very nice, so the first fret isn't a two day ride from the third fret. I also love how this one has modern specs like locking tuners and a spoke wheel truss rod adjustment system, but it isn't super modern metal focused. It obviously will chug, but this looks and probably sounds just fine for even like a Sunday warship band. So if you're a hard rock player that's into baritones, this is kind of perfect. Out of all the new guitars, the Sunset Triads are my favorite because that Tripocalypse pickup is just so ridiculous. But this is a close second. I love a good sleeper baritone chug machine. On the bass side of things, which apparently some of you psychos like, Simon Gallup of The Cure has a pair of new signature basses featuring the heraldic lion he's so fond of because I guess he is a severe case of being very fucking English. He's had signature Ultra Spitfires before, and this one has basically identical specs to the previous versions. Mahogany wings, maple walnut neck through construction, rosewood fingerboard, EMG TBHC pickups, two pneumatic style bridge and tailpiece. It's come in yellow, the MGK pink, and even this red before, but this time it doesn't have the rose graphic that he usually adds as well. His Corsair though is even cooler. Same graphics, same vibe, but in hollow body form. Hollow bodies tend to look super old school, super traditional. It's rare that anyone goes and breaks that mold, like puts passive EMGs or a big ass lion on it. And I'm pretty sure this is the only signature Corsair base in the lineup right now. And while I personally wouldn't play it, 
I always applaud when big artists push things that are out of the ordinary, but the absolute coolest basses that they've dropped, which is a pun that you'll get in a minute, is the new signature Freezical series for Ricky Freeze Smith. And I don't know too much about him, but his taste in bass is fucking awesome. The aesthetic is very Prince-esque. I don't know if that's in tribute or not, but Schechter actually made a production version of Prince's guitars and Freeze currently plays in The Time, which is the band associated with Prince. And the fingerboard has no inlays besides a heart and a crown, so definitely maybe. The Freezical comes in four and five string variants, Swamp Ash bodies, carbon fiber reinforced Canadian rock maple bolt on necks, ebony fingerboards, 24 narrow jumbo frets, interesting. EMGs, a 35J and 35P with white covers, looks so damn clean with the purple metallic finish and gold hardware. What else can you say about these? I mean, these are just funky basses, dude. And I mean that in the most complimentary of ways. So yeah, as I said in the beginning, Schecter's sneakily killing it. They're dropping things that everyone should be talking about, like the Sunset Triads or the Multi-Voice Sixes, like import guitars with really out-of-the-box ideas. And I'll mention it again if you've forgotten or you just don't know, but they actually have a super extensive non-metal focused lineup in the Retro series that's a collection of modernized takes on super traditional designs. But I feel like a lot of the time Schecter just gets written off as that 2000s abalone obsessed metalcore brand. And yeah, they do that and they're damn good at it, but that's not all they do. So if you've been sleeping on Schecter, maybe give them another look because their price to value ratio in the high-end import space especially, metal or not, is one of the best out there. And I will say though, a lot of the Schecters I've played from about five-ish years ago, they had the specs, they had the quality, but still felt kind of soulless. I don't know what they've done, but the last couple of years, especially the satin finished ones, have felt fantastic. I don't even play sevens too often, but I have not been able to bring myself to sell my Keith Merrill KM3 artist. It's just a phenomenal guitar. I mean, John Brown was so impressed with the recent quality, he left mayonnaise for Schecter and even uses Schecter pickups in his signatures as opposed to bare knuckle. And to that end, I'm also excited to see what kind of artist signatures they have coming down the line. We know about that headless Sinister Gates model. That should be interesting, Schecter going headless for the first time. MGK was playing that chromed out signature in his collaboration with Bring Me The Horizon. That would actually be a really cool one. But listen, Schecter. It's time. He's been playing an ever-tuned MGK signature upgraded with Fish and Fluence, which is absolutely amazing, but it's time to give Dan Skimo from Electric Callboy a proper signature. I love that band, dude. They're playing to packed houses. My brother isn't even into metal, but he loves them too, and that's the kind of band that brings new guitarists into the fold. Plus the whole vibe of Electric Callboy, I'm sure it'd be something equally ridiculous and awesome. But anyways, that's the new from Schecter and just some of my thoughts. Here's where I'll throw it to you. What do you think of the new lineup? What's your experience been with Schecter in general? Who else do you think should get a signature? Do you also feel like they're super well-regarded but also strangely kind of an underdog in the guitar world? Or am I just insane? Let me know down below. But that's about all I have for you today. Massive thanks to my amazing patrons who make each and every video possible. Their names are up on the screen right now. Consider joining them if you want to support what I do. You can also join as a channel member or pick up some comfy merch. I basically invest everything back into the channel, so thank you. Really appreciate you all. Social media, Discord, and affiliate links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I will see you for the next video.